It looks like Gary Trent Jr. will be moving to the bench for this upcoming season. As Zach Lowe, NBA insider from ESPN, revealed when talking to Blake Murphy on his podcast that the expectation is that Dennis Schroeder will be the starting point guard for the Toronto Raptors for this upcoming season. And for anyone that watched the FIBA World Cup, this might not come as any surprise as he was absolutely dominant for Team Germany, winning the entire tournament, winning the MVP of the tournament, and was a guy that in the closing of games for the winning team was... Very clutch. Knocked down some long threes, slashed to the rim at will, facilitated for his teammates, rarely turned over the basketball, put on a masterclass at the point guard position for Team Germany, and is hoping to bring that sort of level of play to the Toronto Raptors for this upcoming season. And this isn't some flash in the pan, Wancho Hernan Gomez, FIBA basketball rules, because I mean... He was really solid for the LA Lakers last season as well. Averaged 13 points per game, 2.5 rebounds, 4.5 assists. I mean, we've been talking to death about Dennis Schroeder and his emergence on the FIBA and the international stage. Now he can impact the Toronto Raptors. It's no surprise. Everyone knows that has been watching basketball over the past couple weeks. Schroeder is a guy that's been an MVP, right? He's going to have a serious impact on the squad. But what does this mean for the Toronto Raptors roster? Because if he's going to be the starting point guard, Someone's going to get pushed out of it. And sure, we did have Fred Van Vliet last season, but one guy that did start most of the games was Gary Trent Jr. And, you know, part of that had to do with injuries, and a part of that had to do with we didn't have Yaka Pertle for the entire season last year because the starting unit for most of the second half of the year when everything was healthy, when everything was rolling, was Fred Van Vliet, Scotty Barnes, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and Yaka Pertle. That was the five Nick Nurse tend to run with, and... Gary Trent Jr. was sort of the odd man out of that starting lineup. And when you look at the stats, because Gary didn't really take a major leap last season, looking at his per-season stats, you know, 17 points per game, 2.6 rebounds, 1.6 assists, 37% from the three-point line. You see the stats on the screen, very similar to what they were a year prior, even a little bit of a step down. Defensively, didn't seem to be as engaged, wasn't moving his feet as well, and just didn't really look that consistent out there on the court. On a nights where he was coming off those the bench, the inconsistency really showed to the extreme. Now, a part of that definitely had to do with Nick Nurse because he was a guy that, when Gary Trent Jr. was coming off the bench, didn't really reliably play him out there on the court. I mean, there were nights where he'd come off the bench and he'd get 35 minutes, but there were also nights where we saw Gary Trent Jr., you know, being the lead man, and it was all talked about how the Raptors had no depth last season, all that type of stuff, and Nurse would still only play him 10, 15 minutes and nights where he didn't really hit his shots at the beginning of the game. And this all culminated into the play-in game where Jerry Trent Jr. really didn't have it and Nurse didn't play him whatsoever. And that's a part of the roller coaster we've gotten with Gary Trent Jr. coming off the bench. And it shows in the stats as well, right? Coming off the bench last season, only averaged 15 points per game, 2.6 rebounds, 1.5 steals, right? And there were nights where he was great, he exploded, but there were nights that really take down this average from his numbers as a starter, where he averaged 19 points per game, 2.6 rebounds, 1.8 assists, and obviously the minutes discrepancy, regardless of how he played his direct performance, if you're going to have less minutes out there on the court, right, you're going to be less able to up your point average, right? Just makes sense. The math checks out on that along those lines. But Gary Trent Jr., just from what we saw as Toronto Raptors fans, coming off the bench in combination with Nick Nurse, he was way more inconsistent when he was coming off the pine. It was something we even saw in his first season with the Toronto Raptors when he ended up getting traded for Norman Powell and Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet with the starting backcourt for this team, closing out the season. Gary Trent Jr., when Lowry was resting, would have big games, and then generally you didn't know what you were going to get with him when he was coming off the bench. So it's a you know weird situation we have with Gary Trent Jr. because he's one of those guys that, in theory, could be great coming off the bench. You know, the likes of those uh, J.R. Smith, Jamal Crawfords, bucket getters, right? Guys that aren't too worried about facilitating for others because that's never really been in Gary Trent Jr.'s game, right? Gary Trent Jr. could potentially come in and be a dude that, hey, I can come in, come off the bench and be an absolute flamethrower if he bought into that role. But unfortunately, the consistency hasn't really proven that that's the best potential option for him. But as Blake Murphy sort of discussed, again, I'll show the, the podcast clip there, is... Gary Trent Jr., I mentioned in this video, didn't really take a massive leap. Not in his playmaking, not in his three-point shooting, not in his scoring ability. He looked like the same sort of player with that was a little bit less locked in last season for the Toronto Raptors than he was even the season prior, where the Raptors ended up making the fifth seed, surprised everyone as a young squad that looked like they were on the rise. So if Gary Trent Jr. doesn't take another leap and is still in a contract year, because that's something that is really up in the air right now again 
I bring it up on every third podcast, it feels like. Chris Haynes said on day one of free agency that a contract extension was in the works. It was imminent for the Toronto Raptors and Gary Trent Jr., so maybe he will be signed to a longer-term deal by the start of the season. But as of right now, we don't have that, and Gary Trent Jr. is in a contract season for the Toronto Raptors. So that means the pressure is going to be higher on Gary Trent Jr. to perform, to be a guy that does have a solid scoring average that does get his, so to speak, in order to assure he gets a big bag come next summer, right? And if he's going to be getting inconsistent minutes or is kind of uh, not playing a role he's ultra comfortable with, that's going to exacerbate some of the pressures that he's going to be dealing with being in a contract year and potentially, you know, looking to play for his future with the Toronto Raptors. Again, he had a player option for this season, so the pressure was off a little bit more, even though there was an expectation he'd be a free agent this year, but you know, this season is make or break a little bit in terms of Gary Trent Jr.'s contract, at least, you know, in terms of what he's going to be able to make in his next big NBA deal. So if he's playing inconsistent, it's not the most ideal year for him to be taking sort of a roll back, a step back on uh, the Bob McCallum podcast. De- Matt Devlin went out there and said that the- there is an expectation Scotty Barnes will be having the ball in his hands more often, speculated he might even become the starting point guard for the Raptors, but not a sure thing. We're not really sure what's going to end up happening in regards to that as the season plays out, as it goes along, and maybe there's a potential possibility you slide Scotty to the point. Gary Trent Jr. can earn his way back into the starting rotation. Those are all things you have to discuss and figure out as the season goes along and obviously there'll be injuries and these types of things but if on night one which wasn't the case last season Gary Trent Jr. is going to be coming off the bench we do have to speculate about whether or not he's going to be able to take the leap that a lot of Toronto Raptors fans have been hoping to see since we've acquired him because again we trade away Norman Powell who just spoke out about how he was really disappointed getting traded away from the Raptors he fit that sort of core group with Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam believed in that team to become you know an upper echelon Eastern Conference contender similar to what the Boston Celtics have been in recent seasons. And some people have flamed Norman Powell for saying that, but we traded away that sort of guaranteed slasher, more efficient, you know, he dealt with his own consistencies as well, Norman Powell did, but, you know, that cohesiveness with that group, he was really hitting a stride coming off the bench of the Toronto Raptors that year, right? We gave him up away in order for Gary Trent Jr. to take a little flyer on him to see if he could be a guy that develops into something more. A legitimate top scoring option for the Toronto Raptors. And he hasn't taken that leap yet. Some might say it's because of opportunity. Nick Nurse was holding him back. All that type of stuff. But he's going to be coming off the bench of the Toronto Raptors this upcoming season. It's going to be difficult to see whether or not he'll actually have an impact and or be able to grow, blossom into the player. A lot of the the Gary Trent Jr. stands have been hoping he'd be able to take. So not an ideal situation going into the year for Gary Trent Jr. Again, things might change. We haven't heard Darko Ryakovich speak directly on the lineups, and that's going to be the real guy that makes the decisions. Maybe he'll be a guy that tinkers with lineups and changes things up on the fly as well. So we'll just have to watch to see what ends up happening for the Toronto Raptors group. But again. Dennis Schroeder has proven he's a he's a guy that's won an MVP award out there on the FIBA international stage. So, you know, he's going to be coming in with hot momentum that I'm sure the Raptors will want to ride starting off the season. So let me know what you guys think about the Toronto Raptors sort of lineup situations. Do you think that off the bench is the best role for Gary Trent Jr. Or should we be bringing Schroeder off the bench or someone else? You know, if the roster does stay as it currently is. Let me know in the comment section below. You guys are best for making this far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. And you know, if you guys uh, are interested in checking out Dylan Brooks frustrating some other, uh, frustrating LeBron James, definitely hit the, the link. I'm not sure where it is. I'm going to try this out to close out the video. Anyways, cheers.